here's what actors from the matrix is up to 20 years later wait until you find out who's had the worst career after the matrix number 14 matt duran we started off with australian actor matt duran he played the heroic and hilariously memorable character mouse he seemed to be the youngest person on the ship and was probably deemed the most immature on the ship. But he was still an important programmer and trustworthy enough to be counted on inside the Matrix. He was the designer of the woman in the red dress who completely catches Neo's eye when he sees her. The funniest part is that he tried to get Neo to meet up with her for an official meeting, if you catch my drift. Mouse also introduced the notion that the Matrix might have messed up taste in the Matrix, and that's why everything tastes like chicken. Post-Matrix, you're most likely to recognize Duran as Ellen Sleaze Bagano in Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. However, he's mostly appearing in TV series such as Love is a Four-Letter Word, Always Greener, and All Saints. He's now married to textile designer Terry McPhillips and still lives in Australia and has one son. Number 13, Gloria Foster. Gloria Foster played the Oracle, a prophet who lives in the Matrix, helping the freed humans with her foresight and wisdom. She was known for liking to bake cookies and smoking cigarettes. At her apartment, Neo accidentally knocks over her vase, but of course she already knows what happened. The Oracle was integral to the movie because she helped Neo understand some philosophical questions about the Matrix. After The Matrix, Gloria Foster passed at age 67 because of complications from diabetes on September 29, 2001. However, the former Broadway star still appeared in the second movie. She was able to film some scenes as The Oracle in 2003's The Matrix Reloaded before she passed. Number 12, Fiona Johnson. Speaking of the woman in the red dress, that was Fiona Johnson. Though she had such a short time on screen, she was one of the most memorable characters in the movie. Her character was meant to appear harmless, but to catch trainees' attention for a specific purpose. In contrast, the other pedestrian's attire is mostly black. She then transformed into a simulated agent armed and dangerous. Her character was used to teach Neo that anyone could transform into an agent. Kind of surprisingly, her career never really took off after The Matrix. She's only appeared in five other roles for TV and movies. Her last time appearing on screen was in 2002 for Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones in an uncredited role. Do us a quick favor and hit that like button because it really helps us out. Number 11, Ada Nicodemu. You remember DeJour in the movie, right? She's played by Australian actress Ada Nicodemu. She's also known as the White Rabbit Girl as she had a tattoo of a white rabbit on her left shoulder. DeJour was with her boyfriend Choi and some other people. They showed up at Neo's apartment to pick up some illegal software that he created for Choi. Follow the White Rabbit was the trick that Trinity used to get Neo to go to the club for their first meeting. Her boyfriend's name Choi and her name DeJour together form Choi DeJour, that means choice of the day roughly in French. After The Matrix and Nicodemu almost immediately found more work. She's been a cast member on the Australian soap opera Home and Away for the past 19 years. Nicodemu is almost exclusively on Australian TV. She's only been in one other movie since, and that was back in 2000. In 2005, she even won the Australian version of Dancing with the Stars. Number 10, Hugo Weaving. Who else can you think of that could have portrayed Agent Smith? Hugo Weaving seemed like he was perfect for playing the AI program. Weaving said that playing Agent Smith was fun because the role had a wider range for him to be funny. He had developed a neutral accent for the role because he wanted Smith to sound neither robotic nor human. The development of the Agent Smith character was something that the Wachowskis largely left up to Weaving himself. Since playing Agent Smith in The Matrix, Weaving has played numerous roles in other smash hit movies. He played Elrond in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and in the Hobbit films. He worked again with the Wachowskis on V for Vendetta and Cloud Atlas. He was Red Skull in Captain America, the first Avenger. As if that weren't enough, he also lent his voice to three of the Transformers films, Happy Feet and Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Galoo. Today, he's still together with his longtime girlfriend, Katrina Greenwood, and they live in Sydney along with their two children. Number 9, Joe Pantoliano. 
Joe Pentiliano starred as Cypher, the person who betrayed the entire crew. He was previously freed from the Matrix by Morpheus, and how did he repay him? By making a deal with the agents. He wanted to go back in because reality was too much for him to handle. Ever since becoming a villain on The Matrix, Joe Petigliano continued acting. He teamed up with Matrix co-star Carrie Ann Moss again in Memento, and he also was in Daredevil and Bad Boys 2. Maybe playing a villain was his calling card because he was also on The Sopranos as Ralph Cifaretto. He won an Emmy in 2003 for that role. He also reunited with the Wachowskis for their cult Netflix series Sense8, and he's set to return to the role of Captain Howard in 2020's Bad Boys for Life. Pentoliano revealed that he had dealt with clinical depression for many years. Because of that, he founded a non-profit organization, No Kidding, Me Too, to educate the public about mental illness. Joe is still happily with his wife Nancy and they celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary in February 2019. They have two daughters together and Joe also has a son Marco from his first marriage. Number 8. Belinda McClory Belinda McClory played Switch in The Matrix. She easily stood out from the rest of the crew because she had blonde hair and wore all white. Her not like this ending in the movie managed to make it minor meme status. The character was named Switch because she was originally written to be able to switch genders in between worlds. But that was written out and that's why the Wachowskis wanted Switch to look the way she does. So what's Belinda McClory been up to? McClory continues to appear regularly on camera, although almost exclusively in her native Australia. Her most notable role was in a crime drama called The Dr. Blake Mysteries from 2014 to 2017. She also co-wrote three Australian films with her husband, John Hewitt. Number 7. Marcus Chong Marcus Chong was another memorable character from the movie. He played Tank, the operator of the Nebuchadnezzar. He was one of the few humans born outside the Matrix, and he was the one to save everyone from Cypher's mutiny by shooting Cypher. Following the success of the first film, Chong was initially set to play the role of Tank in the Matrix sequels, but Hawk somehow broke down over his salary demands. Basically, it became a bunch of he said, she said, so yeah, the Wachowskis wrote him out of the script. This is where everything kind of fell apart for Chong. He subsequently sued the studio, claiming that they had succeeded in blackballing him from Hollywood. The feud went as far as Chong getting arrested in 2000 for making verbal threats. Even as late as 2015, he hasn't let the feud go. Check out this tweet. In early 2018, he released a documentary on YouTube chronicling his career and telling his side of what happened with his role on The Matrix. However, his documentary is filled with negative stories towards anyone associated with The Matrix. To be honest, it's kind of a little weird. Since The Matrix, he's had a few appearances on episodes of Law & Order, Numbers, and Burn Notice, but not much else. The last time he appeared in a movie was in 2005 for the movie The Crow, The Wicked Prayer. He's arguably the person who's had the worst career arc after The Matrix, especially when he was thought to be someone that had superstar acting potential. Number 6. Anthony Ray Parker Anthony Ray Parker played the part of Dozer. Just like his brother Tank, he was a naturally born human in Zion and did not create a baby for The Matrix. Dozer filled the role of the nice but tough big brother character on the ship. Cypher's betrayal of Dozer meant that Anthony Ray Parker did not show up in any of the sequels. However, his career has continued outside of The Matrix. Parker has stayed in Hollywood and mostly has done small parts for TV series and movies. His biggest part on the TV since The Matrix is arguably as Sanus on Star's ambitious and underrated Spartacus. For movies, he had a role in John Cena's feature film debut, The Marine, in 2006. More recently, he was in the fantasy thriller Muse in 2017, and opposite Eric Roberts in 2019's Lone Star Deception. Number 5. Rowan Witt While visiting the Oracle for the first time, Neo watched Spoon Boy bend a spoon while he was waiting. This was an iconic scene where Spoon Boy, portrayed by Rowan Witt, taught Neo a little bit about his powers. He tells Neo the memorable line here, Spoon Boy's advice gave Neo the first hint of his own powers when he managed to bend the spoon offered to him. Since appearing as the mysterious Spoon Boy, Wit has mostly been acting back in Australia. He's had success on Home and Away, Escape of the Artful Dodger, and The 21 Conspiracy. He also branched out into musical theatre, getting leading roles in the Australian productions of Into the Woods and The Book of Mormon. 
However, as of 2013, he hasn't had any acting credits to date, so he's been laying low in the limelight. Number 4. The Other Agents Agent Smith had two sidekicks in Agent Brown and Agent Jones, played by Australian actors Paul Goddard and Robert Taylor. We're going to lump them in together because, really, they might as well be in one person. And another thing you're probably noticing by now is the amount of Australian actors and actresses in The Matrix. That's because the movie was filmed in Sydney, where there are a lot of anonymous skyscrapers. Agent Brown was the agent who prominently chased Trinity on the rooftops. He was mostly in the background from then on. But he was also the agent who injected Morpheus with a program in the form of a silver liquid while Morpheus was interrogated by Agent Smith. Agent Jones was the one who famously dodged all of Neo's shots in this iconic scene. Neo was saved when Trinity was able to shoot Jones in the head, but remember, that only sent Jones out of the body he had possessed. So what have Taylor and Goddard been up to? Robert Taylor has since done acting in the UK, Australia, and the US. He's best known for his lead role of Walt Longmire on the show Longmire. As for Paul, Goddard, he's mostly stayed in Australia acting. He's played Stark in the long-running Australian sci-fi show Farscape. He's also appeared in such films as The Everlasting Secret Family, Babe, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. Goddard has also worked as an acting coach on Australia's Next Top Model. Number 3. Lawrence Fishburne Lawrence Fishburne played Morpheus, the character famous for revealing everything to Neo. Morpheus's famous scene offering Neo the choice between the red and blue pill has become the famous what if I told you meme. But what if I told you Morpheus actually never said that in the movie. That's right, he never says it once. He actually starts with let me tell you. This is another clear example of the Mandela effect. So what's Fishburne up to now? Fishburne was already a star prior to The Matrix. In the two decades since, he gave Neo the choice between the red and the blue pill. His career has continued to grow even more. He starred in several cult classics such as CSI and Hannibal, and reunited with Keanu in John Wick, chapters 2 and 3. He's also been in numerous other hit movies such as Predators and Contagion. Since The Matrix, he also got married to and divorced from actress Gina Torres. Number 2. Keanu Reeves Everyone knows that Keanu starred as computer programmer Thomas Anderson, a.k.a. Neo. Can you imagine Will Smith being Neo? He actually was offered the role first. He didn't quite understand the film and decided to film Wild Wild West instead. Smith also felt that the bullet time special effects were too ambitious to make, but he admitted that he probably would have ruined The Matrix because he thought that Keanu was perfect in the movie. After The Matrix, do we really need to say Reeves' acting career continued? Aside from the Matrix sequels, he was in films such as Constantine, Something's Gotta Give, a Scanner Darkly, and Street Kings. But he also dabbled in other things. He wrote a book titled Ode to Happiness. The book was meant to be a semi-humorous take on life. It was a bit of a joke on his reputation back in 2010. Reeves was photographed looking sad and lonely on a bench eating a sandwich. All of a sudden, memes popped up, and there was even a Cheer Up Keanu campaign on Facebook. These days, because of his work in the John Wick franchise, he's now seen as the world's nicest guy. But in reality, Reeves is a great guy. He's stated several times that money is the last thing he thinks about and that he could easily live on what he already made for the next few centuries. Keanu Reeves has set up several charities and foundations. However, he chose not to attach his name to any of the organizations. Number 1. Carrie Ann Moss Carrie Ann Moss played Trinity, Neo's romantic interest. Janet Jackson was initially approached for the role, but scheduling conflicts prevented her from accepting. Moss read the Matrix script and she didn't think she would actually have to do the stunts outline because they seemed so crazy to her. She went ahead and went through casting where she was in for a big surprise. She had to go through a three-hour physical test during casting to make sure she could do the scenes. Apparently, the casting was so intense, she had trouble walking for days. Before The Matrix, Moss was primarily a TV actress, but her role as Trinity took her career to the next level. She herself had said that she didn't have a career before The Matrix. She went as far as saying it was the highlight of her life. Ever since then, she starred in more than a few successful movies such as Memento, Chacola, Disturbia, and Pompeii. Even after being in numerous hit movies and TV shows, she says she's still recognized most as Trinity from The Matrix. She's currently the lead actress on Wisting, a Norwegian television series. She's also appeared on Tell Me a Story, a TV series, 
that takes fairy tales and turns them into psychological thrillers. Watch this next video to find out about what the cast from The Sandlot has been up to.